Now that Monster Hunter World has finished its development and that Capcom is not working on any new content, all of the previously time-restricted limited events are now permanently available for all players to go and do. There are so many fantastic quests that are crammed into the events, allowing you to get rare components easier, exclusive gear, and so much more. As they're all now available, it's really difficult to know which ones are worth doing. To help reduce the overwhelm, I've been doing roundup videos and individual spotlights on the best events to do, spanning from the beginning of the game all the way over to end game. If you haven't caught any of these spotlights so far, I'm sure there's going to be something of value to you. I highly recommend you check them out. I'm Light It Up Dan, and on this channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs, including loads of Monster Hunter World, I'm sure you've noticed. Just as a quick side, I want to say I'm enormously grateful to all of you folks who have brought us from 99% of unsubscribed viewers all the way over to 88%. That is absolutely incredible. Let's keep that momentum up. Given that the majority of you are returning viewers, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. And with that said, let's get to it. For today's roundup, I wanted to cover all of the event armors that are available in the game. This is focusing exclusively on gear that you can craft and equip that has stats. It does not include layered armors, sieges, raids, AT Elder Dragons, festivals or arenas. Similarly, gear that you get just because of monster parts won't be included as well, such as the event to face off against Stygian Zenoga, for example. Up first, we've got the HR11 event, Wiggle Me This, requiring delivery of 10 wigglers inside the Coral Highlands, ensuring you've got your capture net equipped and that you're tiptoeing up to the wigglers to not spook them away. Try and capture two or three at a time, because once you throw down your net, all of them will hide underneath the ground. Heading north of the first camp, there's about three different locations that you can just bounce between. Capturing two or three at a time, they hide away, you move on to the next location and rinse and repeat until you're done. After you've tamed the wriggling trouser snakes, you'll be rewarded with a wiggler ticket or two. Take these over to the smithy to craft yourself a wiggler head alpha armor. A high rank rarity 5 armor with two level 1 gem slots and two levels of wide range. A fun, silly wiggly head armor with two levels levels of a fantastic multiplayer ability. Next, we've got the HR11 event, Scrapping with the Shamos, a slaying quest requiring you to hunt 13 Shamos inside the Coral Highlands. Heading in between area 4 and 6, there's a slope where a lot of them are chilling out. Slaying the ones that you encounter on the way over to this and all of them that are hanging out here should be enough for you to finish the quest. Once you're done bringing shame to the Shamos, you'll be rewarded with one or more black bandages. Take this over to the smithy to craft yourself a sealed eye patch alpha armor, a high rank rarity 5 armor with a level 2 and a level 1 gem slot, and one level of fire resistance. Very functional and happens to look extremely cool. Next up we've got the HR11 event Egg Lovers United, pitting you up against the Kuliyaku inside the arena. Focusing out your damage on the head, making sure that it's tenderized if you've got the opportunity to do so. Being mindful of when it does have a rock in its hands, your attack are likely to get deflected. If you've got any pods that cause a stagger, I think you should be able to get piercing pods off it depending on which weapon that you're using. This causes the monster to drop its rock, getting wall bangs whenever the monster's not enraged and you should be good. After you're done breaking a few eggs to make a Kula Yaku omelette, you'll be rewarded with one or more Kula Yaku tickets. Take this over to the smithy to craft yourself a Kula Yaku head alpha armor, a rarity 5 armor with a level 3 and a level 1 gem slot, and one level of Pro Transporter. Another funny, silly, wobbly head armor, which looks pretty silly, but it's going to help you get through any of those optional quests that require you to transport something. Up next, we've got an HR11 event, a flash in the pan, pitting you up against three Tsitsi Yakus inside the arena. Again, focusing out your damage on the head is going to be really beneficial to you, and if you can come in with three stun resist, you will be immune to its blinding, stunning attack. This makes the fight so trivial, so much easier. Highly recommend you do that. You can get them to stun and blind each other, which also further makes it really trivial. Tenderize where possible, aim for the head, go for wall bangs when they're not enraged, and you should be good. After you're done getting your retinas scorched by all the bloody flashing, you'll be rewarded with a black crystal ticket or two. Head over to the smithy and craft yourself the Shadow Shades Alpha Armor, a rarity 5 armor with three level 1 decoration slots and one level of stun resist, which frustratingly would have been useful to get the quest done 
stun in the first place. Hopefully you were able to make up the three stun resist anyway. Just jumping in, interrupting your all event armors video real fast over here to talk about today's sponsor for this video. My friends at TomTok have done it again. Dear God, look at this thing. Once again, an awesome box. Yo! Look at this thing. Oh my goodness. This sling bag is themed on Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Sunbreak. It's based on the color scheme and the vibe of those knights that you've got in the game. Quite a spacious bag here. It's got different compartments for you to put different things in as well. Great for your electronics. Very cool. Very well made. The strap is really high quality again. And as a sling bag, it's got a very specific like way of carrying it like up here. Pretty cool. Pretty sick. I'm pretty sure this will fit a switch in as well. And the back of it is like kind of padded and stuff. God damn, that's nice. That is actually super nice. Head over to the Amazon links in the description. You can get it for your region. Go take a look. They've got some really, really cool stuff on there. And a massive thank you once again for TomTok for sponsoring this video. You guys are the goats. Now back to your video. Up next is an HR13 event, USJ blazing as your stars, pitting you up against a gigantic Dodo Gamma and a miniature as your Rathalos inside the Elder's Recess. Giant best boy Dodo here is a target you can't really miss. Depending on where you're fighting it, you can drop down pillars to do a lot of damage and to topple it over, make use of ledges to get powerful jumping attacks off, and as always, tenderize the parts and go for wall bangs when the monster's not enraged. Do be careful about its powerful blast attacks, focusing your damage out on on the head when you can. As your Rathalos is a menace, but given that this one is so tiny, you're going to have a pretty easy time making sure you connect your hits. Because it's so small, it can't really maneuver about all over the place like a usual size one would. This also helps you to evade its attacks pretty effectively too. Focus out damage on the head, watch out for its poisonous talons and its fire breath, try and ground it when it's hovering, either with aerial sliding attacks depending on which weapons you are using, or by using your clutch claw to flinch shot it into the ground. Your cleanser boost is going to be pretty useful here as well just to get rid of the fire blight and to get rid of any poison. Once you're done feeling bad for having to slay best boy Dodo, you'll be rewarded with an Azure Star gem or two. Take these over to the smithy and craft yourself the Azure Star Lord Alpha armor set. A gorgeous looking powerful Rarity 7 armor set featuring some really cool skills and abilities including Agitator, Handicraft, Recovery Up, critical boost, and of course the Rathalos mastery on it as well, giving you critical element at two pieces equipped and mind's eye at four pieces. A fantastic choice for high rank. Up next, we've got an HR14 event, the fantastic Devil May Cry collab quest, Code Red, pitting you up against an Anjanath, Odegaran, Rathalos, and Teostra in the arena one after the other. Don't be intimidated by all these monsters that you have to face off against, as any time you've got a multi-monster quest, their HP HP totals are reduced vastly. The more the monsters, the more the reduction. You're going to be getting set on fire a lot during this quest, and possibly even bled and poisoned, with of course the blast blight at the end with the Teostra. Fire resistance is going to be helpful, particularly if you can get 20 or above to have fire blight resist. Your cleanser booster will be super useful too. All the best practices come into play here. Tenderize parts where you can, focus damage out on the head, go for wall bangs whenever the monster's not enraged, utilize the ledge or the sliding area to get mounts or powerful attacks depending on what weapons you're using. And don't be afraid to do this in multiplayer. It's easy to watch me back in Master Rank gear absolutely smashing these things, but you're going to be high rank when you're trying this yourself. After you're done turning the red into the dead, you'll be rewarded with one or more red orbs. Take these over to the smithy to craft the phenomenal Dante Alpha armor set. A rarity 8 armor featuring some really powerful skills, including weakness exploit, critical eye, evade window, and more. This set looks absolutely killer, and you get to look like bloody Dante from Devil May Cry. I mean, come on! So cool! Over to Master Rank with the MR3 event Pearl Snatchers, requiring you to deliver six Pearl Spring macaques in Horfrost Reach. I think I'm saying that right? Macaques? I don't know. YOLO. Heading over from one hot spring to the next, make sure you've got your capture net equipped, and grab those monkey-looking things 
As soon as you whip out your net, they're gonna run off, so do grab as many as you can, and then head over to the next hot spring. Once you're done reducing these poor innocent creatures to a life of captivity, you'll be rewarded with the Pearl Spring ticket. Take this over to the smithy and craft yourself the Pearl Spring Alpha Plus Armor. A rarity 9 head armor with a level 2 and level 1 gem slot, and 2 levels of recovery up. A fantastic must-have skill in my opinion. Not bad to get you up and running in Iceborne. And of course, you get a macaque on your head. Next, we've got the MR3 event Duffel Duty, requiring you to deliver 8 duffel penguins in Horfrost Reach. Head over to Central Camp number 7, drop down the hole, and they'll be there for you to capture. I recommend you make your way fully into the little cave bit all the way up to the lake, as once you start capturing them, they'll all start sliding down and jumping into the water. You probably won't be able to get them all in one go, but this way you'll maximize the amount you do get. Fast travel to another camp, maybe go mine some ores or something, head back over to camp number 7, and they should have respawned again. Once you're done perpetuating your streak of captivity cruelty, you absolute monster, you'll be rewarded with a penguin ticket. Take this to the smithy to craft yourself a duffel penguin mask alpha plus armor. A rarity 9 head armor with a level 4 gem slot and 2 levels of evade window. And you get to look ridiculous or awesome depending on which perspective you have. Next, we've got the MR3 event Flora Frostbite, where you'll need to deliver 10 ice blooms in Hoarfrost Reach. Starting at Camp 7 or Camp 15, both are fantastic choices, you're going to need to gather at the Frozen Foliage nodes. If you've got levels in Botanist, this is going to help here. Even if you don't have anything for gathering, it's going to be super easy and quick. There's loads of these Frozen Foliages nearby. After you're done bricking it that you're going to run into a barrier, you'll be rewarded with a Wyvarian ticket. Take this over to the smithy and craft yourself the Wyvarian Ears Alpha Plus Armor. A rarity 9 head armor with a level 4 gem slot and 2 levels of Mushroom Mancer and 1 level of Survival Expert. And you get to make all of your elf cosplay dreams a fantasy, you pervert. Next is an MR18 event USJ Ballet of Frost, pitting you up against a Frostfang Barrier in Hoarfrost Reach. This monster can be tricky, but by focusing your damage out on the head, you should get plenty of part breaks which will give you opportunities where the monster will flinch, allowing you to do some extra damage and really get in there. The best strategy for Barrier is to ensure that you break the two front arms, as this will cause it to trip up every single time it leaps around the area. This gives you so many damage windows and opportunities to build up KO, tenderize the parts, get additional part breaks, and of course go for wall bangs when it's not enraged. 20 or more ice resistance is going to give you additional defense and of course give you immunity to ice blight, which is super useful. Once more, don't be afraid to do this in multiplayer, Barrier can be really tricky when you're not used to it. After you're done dancing to the Ode of Death, you'll be rewarded with one or more large Azure Era gems. Take these over to the smithy to craft the fantastic Azure Age Alpha Plus armor set. This provides the maximum raw defense available for Master Rank armors at 850 total defense without upgrades, provides great elemental resistances without any negative ones, has some great skills like weakness exploit, focus, constitution, water attack as well if you've got a water elemental weapon, and true critical element when you've got four pieces of armor equipped. Making this a good choice to take up against Alatreon as well if you want to use true critical element. And it looks goddamn dope as well, I mean look at it. Next we've got an MR20 event which is actually a Resident Evil collab, RE Return of the Bioweapon, pitting you up against a Black Veil Valhazark in the Rotten Veil. This is a super fun, really unique little quest where effluvia resist isn't going to do anything for you at all, so you might as well not take it. And when the effluvia would normally activate and halve your HP, you actually turn into a zombie. In this state, you quickly regenerate HP, you're invulnerable to the acid damage, and a few other fun little quirks. And dotted around the stage are green herbs, like the ones you get in the Resident Evil games. These will cure you from your zombie status, so you can go back to dealing damage to the monster. And apart from this, it's just a regular fight against a Black Veil Valhazak. Aim for the spore sacks on it so it doesn't do its super explosion attack. Focus your damage on the head if possible, I know it's quite tricky with Val. Tenderize the monster's parts so you can deal out additional damage. And of course, go for wall bangs when it's not enraged, or your usual best practices. There's a part of the stage before its layer, which it might fight in, or it might skip and go straight to its layer, where these giant hanging teeth pillars can be knocked down with your slinger, and will deal a tremendous amount of damage and top the monster over. This should 
be in zone 12 of the map. Utilizing one or both of these pillars if you're able to will make a tremendous difference with this fight. Once you're done satisfying your craving for brains, you'll be rewarded with one or more stars badges. Taking these over to the smithy and selecting full armor sets, you can craft yourself the Leon Alpha and Claire Alpha armor sets. Very unique looking, of course, because you take on their appearance. It's actually got some pretty damn good skills with Agitator, Evade Window, Agitator Secret, and Zombie in Effluvia Resistance as well. Not to mention really good elemental resistances. Just a pretty fun armor set to get. I'm not sure you're really going to use it, but it's pretty cool. Next, we've got an MR20 event, A Chilling Entrance, pitting you up against a Black Veil Valhazak and a Velkana in Ancient Forest. Seems really scary, two Elder Dragons, but again, because it's two monsters, much less HP. This time, your Effluvia Resist is going to do something, so do bring that along. Maybe even bring your previous armor set along if you've made it. Focus out your damage on the head, belly, and legs, but head is good if you can get it. Try and attack the spore sacks that you see bulging. You see one on the top of the tail, on its belly as well. Smashing those prevents it from doing its big explosion attack where it puts effluvia everywhere. You can get rid of the effluvia clouds with fire damage, both with weapons or with pods. Use any traps, ledges, and slopes for sliding attacks to your advantage, and get wall bangs whenever the monster isn't enraged, of course. Shortly after taking out the Black Veil Valhazak, Velkana will show herself. Here, having high ice resist will be really useful to mitigate damage, and if you've got 20 or more, to give you ice blight immunity. Alternatively, you've got null berries, you've got your cleanser booster, but it's just useful to have that immunity anyway. Focus out your damage on the head, tenderize it if you can. You can build up lots of KO really easily to topple over Velkana. That, alongside your part breaks, alongside your mounts, is going to make sure that you have lots of damage windows to really go in on her. Once you're done disrespecting your elders, you'll be rewarded with one or more sealed dragon cloths. Take these over to the smithy to craft the fantastic sealed dragon cloth alpha plus head armor. A rarity 12 armor with two level 4 decoration slots, five dragon elemental resistance, and one level of resentment too. And it looks absolutely killer. God damn. Not just highly aesthetically pleasing, but very functional too. This is a fantastic piece of head armor. Up next, we've got an MR24 event, The Last White Knight, pitting you up against a tempered Frostfang Barrier in Hoarfrost Reach. All the same advice for the previous Frostfang Barrier for the USJ Ballet of Frost Quest. This one's tempered, so it's got more HP, it hits harder, etc. Focus out your damage on the head, going for multiple part breaks as much as you can. Break the front two arms to cause it to stumble every time it leaps around. Tenderize parts for additional damage and go for wall bangs whenever the monster isn't enraged. Getting your part breaks, stuns, mounts, wall bangs is going to give you all the opportunities you need to take the monster down. Having immunity to ice blight is going to be helpful however way you go about that. Once you're done shiverously defending eagles with all of your honor and integrity, the last white knight, get it? You'll be rewarded with one or more Frostfang tickets. Take this over to the smithy to craft the fantastic Frostfang armor set. Not only does it look absolutely amazing, it has great decoration slots and some fantastic skills on it too, including critical eye, attack boost, quick sheath, and punishing draw when you've got one piece equipped, as well as slugger secret when you've got three pieces. An excellent armor set. Next is an MR24 event, Muscle Monkey Madness, pitting you up against two Rajangs in the arena. After facing off against Furious Rajangs and Tempered Furious Rajang in Muon number one, this just feels like easy mode now. But it's not. It's still really tough. This is still such a hard monster. Focus out your damage on the head, and when the monster turns into its Super Saiyan form, given it's the regular Rajang, it still has its tail. Focus your attacks out on the tail, and you'll zap it out of its Super Saiyan form. If you get the opportunity, tenderizing the lower half does help you get out additional damage during the fight. Depending on what weapon you've got, the ledge might be really useful, and of course the sliding part of the arena too. As a hammer user, amongst other weapons of course, I really like to fight at a ledge 
damage, it's very useful for me to get these fantastic jump attacks off and mounts as well. Bringing three tremor resist is kind of like Rajang's kryptonite in my opinion. It really helps make the fight a lot easier. It won't stun lock you into a bunch of different attacks. Make sure you pick up any monster pods whenever you can, the ones that interrupt them, piercing pods, bomb pods, whatever comes off it, as inevitably when it grabs you or one of your teammates, you'll then be able to flinch it out of it. Lightning resist will help boost your defenses as well, and I highly recommend bringing three stun resist. I take this as just a standard, so I kind of don't even mention it. Whilst they're not both in the arena right from the beginning, after a certain amount of time or damage, I'm not sure how it works, the second Rajang will be released. Do not keep these separate, let them face off against each other. They deal so much damage to each other and keep knocking each other over. Whilst it does make it really chaotic, it is a huge help. Once you're done battling with the realization that Freezer did have a pretty good point, you'll be rewarded with one or more buff tickets. Take these over to the smithy to craft the hilarious Rarity 11 buff body alpha plus armor, featuring agitator, attack boost, heroics, this is wild armor, and because it doesn't come with a headpiece, allows for some top quality content. Nice meme. And that my friends is every single event armor you can craft in all of Monster Hunter World and Iceborne. Do you have these? Are there any that you're missing that you didn't know about that you're going to check out now? I'm pretty sure I haven't, but did I miss any? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am overwhelmed with the amount of support from everyone. Taking us from 99% of unsubscribed viewers all the way over to 88%. That's amazing. Let's keep up that momentum. As the majority of you are returning viewers, if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. I've opened up the Discord community for all of you to join, so come on over, get some hunts with myself and others in Monster Hunter World or Monster Hunter Rise as well. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the new world.